Well, good evening, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. My last four videos have been flunks um, due to the, uh, the music. I couldn't find a way of making that music um, any softer. During the recordings, the music volume was down, but um, when it was being uploaded, somehow rubber it kept increasing back to a not sound level that was louder than the voice. So I do apologise and I hope you accept my apology um, for the bad quality of those videos. I have taken a couple of them down, they were so bad. But I hope you'll join me tonight um, just quickly as we stop and consider um, Psalm 40. I don't know if we'll get through all of it, but we'll have a look at it now. I'll get out of the picture. And it's a psalm where the chief musicians received it from King David. Um, before we start, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, by your Spirit, in the name of Jesus, just to help us through this psalm. Um, there's many things we need to see and know. And with all the ideas and beliefs and interpretations, mine included, it's hard to stop and just consider what somebody else might be trying to say. So I just hope tonight I get it right, that in some way I help somebody somewhere that might watch this video. And I thank you, Lord, that you, I am still able to do videos. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 40, verse 1, David says, I waited, past tense, patiently for the Lord. Waiting and patience are psychological skills that are slipping through our fingers in this modern day, isn't it? More and more we are expecting things to be immediate, instant. I mean, if you go through McDonald's drive through down here where I live and they don't give you your food um, in a certain amount of time, they give you a free cheeseburger or something of that nature. And so we become spoiled. We forget about the values and the wisdoms of things like waiting and patience. Because you know why? When you're waiting and you have to be patient, you're not doing anything. You're not having to do anything. You've just got to wait. It's like waiting for a bus. There's nothing you can do until that bus gets there and unless, and except wait. You can read a book, you can listen to music, but you're waiting. And so it is with waiting on the Lord. But even waiting on the Lord now is being turned into a chore. We've forgotten the art of just being still and knowing that he is God, that he will incline his ear to us and hear our prayer, as David explains there. <clears throat> One of the beauties of knowing God is crying out to him about the horrible things that we experience. The pits, you know, we say, oh, I'm in the pits. Well, that's what he wants. I mean, how else are you going to vent yourself? Yeah, we have friends we can trust and even professional counsellors and helpers. But the Lord's there for this as well. Lord, I'm in a horrible pit. I've broken my leg. I've broken my arm. I was fatigued when I'd done it. I shouldn't have done it. I had all this other stuff going through my mind. I blindsided myself. I've done myself an accident. It's my fault. As if he doesn't know. But at least I've got someone I can share it with. All I can do is say sorry to my wife because of now I'm laid up for the... And I don't know, this could go on for three months. This is a very difficult thing to try and deal with. It's, it's please, Lord, get me out of the miry clay. Heal me as quickly as you can. Set my feet upon the rock who is the Lord Jesus Christ and establish my steps so that everything I do right down to what I eat, helps me to heal as quickly as I can. Now, it sounds selfish, but you've got to be desperate, haven't you? I'm desperate. I need to get better quick. 
um, as quick as my body can without pushing it or being silly. But I can do things in my diet and with certain exercises around these broken bones that will help these bones to heal and get me out of the clay a lot quicker. My feet are set upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, and my steps, I hope, are established in him by faith. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 40 verse 4. Blessed is the person, and you'll hear me paraphrase sometimes, but it's not taking things out of context, it's just paraphrasing it to make it more applicable to the listener. Blessed is that person who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Now this was, I thought, was very interesting because it connects lying with pride. And what happens when people get caught in lies, they too often do not confess until they're caught in the lie. Now, I don't want to mention the Jehovah Witnesses and the Watchtower Track and Bible Society, but why don't they just admit their lies, say they don't want to lie anymore, get things right, and move on? Why? Pride. Just It's just pride. It's demonic pride because... They can't humble themselves enough to say, we've got this, this and this wrong. We're going to fix it. We're going to change it. Yes, it's going to make some people mad and they'll probably leave. But it's going to help us to be right. We're going to get things in order. But, my God, they just won't do it. And that's called theological abuse. Did you know that, viewers? When somebody's using the Bible as a lie, or in a lie, that's called theological abuse, which is one of the most treasonous forms of abuse one can undergo or be put through. It's a horrible form of abuse, because people want to trust in the Lord properly. They want to follow their God properly. But how can they do it if they're being led by a cult or an organisation that won't or isn't able to show them how to do that? You know, in so many ways it's our personal responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen to us. But, you know, the Lord doesn't respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. And we need to be very mindful of that. We need not to just stand there and go, well, I have the truth and haven't made the effort to investigate whether it is the truth or not. In my case, I've spent tens and thousands of dollars in university, years and years of torturous writing and tests and thesis and books and, oh, gosh... And I see these people that sit there and say they've got the truth. And the poor, they're just so far from it. It's staggering. Have I got all the truth? No, nobody will have, ever have all the truth. But to, know, to, to be in and out a lie and not want to do anything about it, that's another thing altogether, isn't it? Learning's progressive, isn't it? It's progressive. But the proof is there for the poor old Jehovah Witnesses. Verse 5. Man, in fact, let's just pray for a minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind and break the lies on the minds of the Jehovah Witnesses right now, and I ask you to free them from the bondages that are holding them captive from the pathway to truth, the real truth about you. In Jesus' mighty name, let your presence, Holy Spirit, begin to enlighten these people dramatically, dramatically. 
Verse 5 Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. You think about it every time somebody comes out of a cult. You know? All the effects and the things that they got to go through to get out of the fog of it, get out of the guilt and the shame of it. it takes years. Some people never fully find their way out. But many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Well, there's a lot more in that psalm, but I think we'll close with another prayer just for our relatives the ones that we can't reach that are caught in these organisations thinking that they're on the right path and everybody that knows watching them and seeing them so deceived. So Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, we ask you to allow the presence of your Holy Spirit, the precious Holy Spirit, to descend on these ones all over the globe. In Jesus' mighty name, And multiply those who are coming out of these cults and strengthen your recovery, Lord, in them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like, um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.
Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment if you watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.